Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So we have a Heathkit SB220 here that someone sent in. Has the has a bunch of the heart box stuff done to it. Clean front panel. He tried to put the soft start kit in, but it didn't work out. That's why he took it out. Had some shipping damage, as you can see. It was dropped really hard. So he opted to just have me bend it all back. So I'll go ahead and do that. Someone tried to ground the grids. They did a credit job. So I'll take all that out and put straps in. I'll fix all this. Take these fuse holders out, all this stuff. Check the fuse of the uh, circuit breakers. See if they are okay. If not, then I will replace them. So, has the filter cap kit. Yeah, it's pretty clean inside, so it's a shame. But I'll get her working again. I'll bring her back to life. I'll put a fuse in there. I don't ever do that. Okay, so I will be back and get and get to work. I will see you soon. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Amp Repair Guy, and I'm back with the completed SB220. So, I ended up bending the floor back the best I could, and the side panel. Okay, so, I'll show you everything I did. It needed a new air variable. The one that was in it had arc damage. And these are so cheap, it just makes sense just to replace it so I've shown that in other videos I use an air variable from Ameritron same one they use in the LADB and AL572 so cut the shaft down cut another shaft piece and used a coupler so it comes with that phenolic piece on it new plate blocking cap thousand puff Rewound the parasitic suppressors. The customer already put the Harbach boards in, metering board, filter cap board, so that's not my work. Uh, he had a fuse in here with the wrong resistor. Had uh, double the resistance and the wattage wasn't high enough. It would have ended up burning up. So I put the right resistor in. He has LED lights, so I left those alone. He had this bypassed, he had zip ties on here. You don't want to defeat this. This will save your life if you make a mistake and have the cover off and put your hands in here. So, re-enabled that. Clean the output rotary switch, deoxid gold. You always want to make sure the screws and the air variables are really tight. And also this connection right here. And always inspect all of the solder joints on the band switch and this sometimes this solder joint can fail right there so I think that's about it for the top yeah, he had a fuse in series with the resistor too that's that's a bad idea so you can open the plate and continue to drive the tubes so anyway I will flip it over and I'll show you the bottom I'll be right back see you soon okay, so let me use my screwdriver for this part. Clean the TR relay, deoxy gold, inspected all of the connections. Ran a new piece of Teflon wire over to the coil. The other one was too short. Changed the electrolytic cap. Piece of solder right there. Get rid of that. Okay. Grounded the grids. Strap. It's all good. Inspected all the other solder connections. He had the soft start. He had a problem with it. I removed it. It's not needed on these amps. They wanted the transformers to, uh, so the, the inrush is limited when you first turn it on. The problem is those cement resistors, if you have any sort of arc or anything, they always fail. So I've never had to change a power switch. Um, I've worked on over 550 of these. Never had to change one. So... You know, if one of those cement resistors fails, 
then a lot of times they the customer can't fix it they have to send it back to me and then they risk shipping damage and they have all the costs associated with shipping and all that so and then the downtime so um, replace the circuit breakers one of the bottom was broken the floor was uh, pushing up against it new wiring to the circuit breakers from the breakers to the terminal strip here which uh, changes the configuration from 120 to 220 I uh, put hotter uh, solder and heat shrink on the wires uh, where he cut them for the so soft start board and also for the fan so that's that's all good and uh, also as a soft key customer put that in I did not do that so this thing is all set if you need any amplifier repaired please feel free to give me a call I have a lot of amps here I have let me turn around here my chair my dog food another SP220 I'll be taking that apart inspect it and then I'll order the parts SP200 I'm waiting on parts for and another SP220 I have another one on the way and a couple 922s on the way it's very busy here but please keep in mind I usually get one one done a day so they're always coming in but I get an amplifier, take it apart, see what it needs, order the part, I end up ordering the parts. So when the parts get here, boom, I get it done. You know, so things don't sit here for forever, for weeks and weeks. I just have to wait on the parts if I don't have the parts. So, um, but they usually take like a week or less. But, uh, you know, so like I said, this is what I do full time. So very thorough. I take a lot of pride in my work. So, if you need an amplifier repaired, please feel free to give me a call. The website is amprepairguy.com, 203-892-411. Sorry about that, the battery went dead. Just wanted to show some other stuff I have here on my bench. These two have been completed. My videos on these, just waiting on payments. Waiting on payment on this. This is all set. I work on everything over here. Safe zone. Then I bring it over here and I test it. If I have to work on it, it comes over here. So tomorrow's garbage day. I'll go through all the tube duds, throw all those out, and clean my bench off. This is what happens within a week time. I just get just stuff all over. And uh, this is a busy shop. This isn't some you know, I'm not someone that just works on this on the side and uh, you know I'm a hardcore repair guy. I work on lots of amps a year. So, so all right. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great day. The website is amprepairguy.com. It's 203-892-4119. There's one of the fuse holders he had in there. And the resistor. It's a 25-ohm 10-watt. All right. Take care. See you again soon.